It is the octave day of Saints Peter and Paul and all the great work that they did and brought their lives to, to spread the faith. And it's most interesting when we read the epistle today in light of that very work that they did. That was, you know, we have to think of it as their vocation in life. That's what God literally called them to, uh, was the calling to preach the gospel to all creatures throughout the world, to spread that faith from uh, far and wide to convert as many souls as possible to the, the Catholic faith, to the to the one true religion of Jesus Christ who came to redeem them. And it's interesting because when we look at the epistle, what does it de- how does it describe the work of the apostles? It talks about it not in terms of labors, it talks about it not in terms of of, of trials or, or hard works, but it talks of it as a seed, a seed that they they planted, and, was a, and that their seed was good. That they, you know that these were just men, but the, their seed bore good fruit. And and it's amazing when you really think about it, because every one of us has that responsibility for ourselves. Not like Saint Peter and Paul, we don't have to go all over the world and preach to every nation, of course. But each one of us has the responsibility to plant seeds, to, to, and that is what gains souls for the church. Too often, when I talk to people, and even in my own thoughts sometimes, it's a thought of, what can I do to gain a soul? What can I do to convince somebody of the truth, or to make them realize that this is the true faith in their lives. And then not only to realize it, but then to embrace it and to practice it. That's our first thought, isn't it? What can I do? But that is not how we actually gain souls. Ours has to be the work of the sower of the seed. Our Lord converts people. Our Lord gives them the grace to come to the true faith. Our Lord gives them that opportunity to make that choice and he gives them the graces to see the truth before their eyes and everybody else all the rest of us were merely merely tools in that operation and more often than not it's a tool that is used purely in the spiritual realm we do so much more by our prayers and by our sacrifices than our good works and uh, by our sorry by our acts of trying to convert people. Now I'm not saying don't go and talk about the faith. Don't try to gain souls by you know speaking with them. But we have to fall back upon the basics, the seed. We are there to. Any time a seed is planted, it requires a lot of labor in order to both plant it and then for it to come to fruition. So every time we have to labor to plant the seed, that's our preparation time. That's the time that we spend in reviewing our catechism so we know the faith inside and out. It's the time that we spend reading the lives of the saints so we have good examples of people who fought the good fight and lived lives of virtue. And we have good examples at our ready for people who dealt with various difficulties that we'll find in people in throughout the world that uh, we might have the opportunity to speak to. And then when all of a sudden they tell us, well, yeah, but I struggle about the, the situation in the church and the, the fact that the, that the Novus Ordo is not the true church. How can that be? Well, I have these examples of saints that also fought against similar type of situations and how they dealt with it. You know, that I have those ready to go. I have also prepared my way by prayers and sacrifices, making my own spiritual, well, my own soul ready as can be for those opportunities. It's oftentimes said you cannot give what you do not possess. So if we don't have a spiritual life, we can never imagine to impart it upon another person. If we don't have a firm grasp in our faith, we can't explain it well to them. And so if we want people to have live a life of grace, then we have to strive after that ourselves by our own actions. So we take that time of hard work and preparation in our prayers. Then the opportunity comes. We meet that person 
on the street or at our work or at our school or whatever it might be. God gives us the opportunity to say something, to be even just simply a good example. Now we plant the seed, we start the conversation, and we, and we give the information that we have. And then from there comes all of the hard work that we must do again. Our prayers, our sacrifices for the good of them. Because it's only through the watering and caring for the seed that it grows up. But how do we water a seed? That water of sal- for, that is good for salvation comes from the precious blood of our Lord. It comes from himself. That was the price for man's redemption. That was the price for our sins. That was the price to open the gates of heaven. If that's our goal for them, then that's what we need to water it with. And we can only do so by praying and sacrificing for them. And so all that moment in time, that seed, is the good action that we see put forth by the apostles. It's that good action that we see put forth by those who gain conversions. But what we miss is all that is behind closed doors that happens in the work, the tilling of the soil to make it ready, and the care for the seed after it has been planted. Oftentimes, realistically speaking, our work goes into being the hired hands. We do all the tilling, we do all the praying and sacrificing, and we do the watering by our prayers afterwards. We never get that opportunity to actually lay the seed in the ground, but we know that a good planter comes along and does it for us, and we just trust that our labor goes into that good fruit. When you go to the market and you buy fruit, you don't really care who planted it, who cared for it and who watered it. You just care that it's good fruit. That's our goal in our spiritual life, working for other souls. We don't care if we get credit for it. We don't care if we see those opportunities. All we know is that we have to put the work in to make that pathway as ready as possible and that we hope, in the end, it bears good fruit. That's what the apostles did all their lives long. That's what all their suffering was for. That was why St. Paul goes through that litany of all the things that he suffered for the name of Christ. Just to show an example of all the trials that he endured. Why? Not because there were people on the boat that saw him shipwrecked. Not because there were people that were witnessing him and seeing, wow, look at how many times he's been scourged over these years. Or, hey, look at all these different difficulties that he's had to endure and, and mutiny and things like that. No, he wasn't, it wasn't a brag. It wasn't trying to look at me, look how much I did. But rather, it's just an illustration to show that that's the hard work that goes into that seed planted in whatever vocation you went to, one day bearing fruit, because the secret works water that. The secret works grow it up. The secret works make it healthy and well. That's our work to save souls. That little message in that little seed and all that goes to care for it. May God bless you in the name of the Father.